Hey guys and girls, welcome back to another beautiful video on this beautiful channel, on this beautiful day. How are y'all doing? I hope you're doing great as always. Please check out the description box for all the nice links. Also drop a like, subscribe if you like the content. Check out the top right eye as well. You got a bunch of nice links there as well. And here we go. So let's start off by talking about what this video is going to be about. And this is something that a lot of you requested. I do have videos like this on my channel already, but I want to make one that is a little more in depth and a little more structured. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through the simple aspects of arrays in C++. We're not going to do all the uh, complicated stuff, all the high level or the more advanced low level stuff. I mean, we're going to do that in the next video, but this is going to get you started. If you're new to arrays, I'm going to talk about some more things here. So you know what to look forward to later on. But let's start off with a simple array explanation. So I know a lot of people struggle with arrays just like they do with pointers. Please check out the pointer video that I made as well because that might help you in this understanding. But if you don't want to do that, don't worry. We'll go through it very simply. But arrays are basically containers. They're containers of one single type. So with that, I mean, if you imagine yourself painting something here let's make some paint here so imagine yourself in your garage okay you have a big garage here and in your garage you probably have a bunch of smaller boxes right a bunch of smaller boxes here just like this boom 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 and imagine you're storing similar things in these boxes okay so you have books you have one two three four five six boxes of books so we have our books in here we might have a book on C++, Java, C Sharp, whatever. You have a bunch of books here, but they're all books. They have to be the same type in an array. You have to create an array for a single type. So you have that here. And then each box, you might have labeled something. So you say this is box one, this is box two, three, four, five, and six. That's the way you have it. And of course, this is how you would label your boxes. But in C++, what I want you to think of is Instead of one, you're going to start off at zero always when we're talking about arrays. That's the only thing. That's the only difference. When you have your, when you're in your garage, you number your boxes, start off by numbering your first box at zero instead of one. That's it. So in box zero, we have the C++ book. Box one, we have the C sharp book and so on and so on. And then you have them in an order. So you're probably not going to put all of these everywhere in your garage. You're going to have them lined up after one another. So you know if you start at zero, you know that the next box is going to contain a book. And then you know that maybe you have six boxes of books. So the last book is going to be in box number five. And that's kind of how that works. And then your mom here calls. Let's make, I'll make a mom here. This is your mom, okay? She's calling. She's calling you. Yo, bro, bring me the java book okay and this might be the java book now i might have said java in some other box here but don't mind the details so she tells you to go grab the java book what do you do well you go ahead and you go into your box array and you grab it at position three and that would be the fourth box okay you just grab that out and and you just bring it to your mom just nicely like that and it's still going to be there. You might, you're going to probably get a copy of this book or you're going to do something like that if you're thinking C++ terms. But don't get hung up on the details. Anyway, it's in box three. This is what we're going to do. So that's a basic explanation of arrays. And we're going to play around with it a little bit. So let's make our so let's make a few arrays here. So first of all, I'm going to make a very simple array, which is let me go down here where I actually wrote simple array. We're going to make an integer array. And hopefully you know about types and you know about some things in programming in C++. So you, you, you can't be a total beginner for this. But if you are, still try to hang on here. Try to see what you can get from this. But anyway, let's make a simple array. So int. And the syntax for making an array would be, it would be the type, the name of the array, and the number, the max uh, size. Let's call it max size, like that. And then you can initialize it. You don't have to initialize it. But it's a good recommendation to initialize it one way or another. And I'll show you a few different ways of initializing arrays. So I'm going to do that right here. Initializing arrays. And I'm going to say that this is very important because you can get a lot of random behavior if you don't. So there you go. That's a good way of doing it. Uh, and also I'm going to give you a few tips here in the end. Just how to work on arrays. So first of all, let's go ahead and do this. Let's create an int my int array. So remember, type name my int. That's how I refer to this array later on. 
how do I grab things out of it? I'm going to say I want five integers in here. So I'm giving it a maximum size. And now we're going to check out a few ways of initializing it. Now, this is a very simple array, right? And let's go ahead and do that down here below. Let's do my int like this. And first of all, a regular way of people initializing this would be making a for loop. Now, hopefully you've done for loops before. So you're going to go ahead and do a for loop. It start at, starts at zero. Remember the first box is zero, right? And the end would be the size minus one. So five is our size, but that means it goes from zero to four. Zero to four, and that's called an index. So zero to four is our index. We can put anything in zero to four. And I'm gonna put a five right here, less than five, remember. So it will only go up to four. Now I'm gonna do my int at position i equals zero. Very simple, right? Very simple. And this would be this would be a very simple way of initializing our array with a bunch of zeros. All right. Uh, even simpler way would be to do this. When you create your array, you can initialize it in a bunch of different ways. So first of all, what you could do is you could actually just write zero here and that will put a bunch of zeros in this array. If you write one zero, one value or any value, it will give it will fill this array with that many values so you can have a 50 size array you put a zero here it will initialize all of those to zero but there are other ways to do it as well what if you want specific values now there's another way to do it say i want five values but they go from one to five so i'm going to do one two three four and five just like that and if you do it like this, you're going to have to initialize every single one of these five positions. You can't just leave one hanging like that. So if you do it this way, you're going to have to fill it out. So now I have my array from one to five. Let's print this array out. Let's make a for loop here. For loops your friend uh, because that's the way you're going to be printing out your arrays. Five is the size of this, remember, and we start at zero. And i is less than 5 is very important. Otherwise, you're going to get something called an out-of-bounds exception. And that's when you try to access something at that is outside of your array. And that's not good because you might get some unidentified, un, uh, uh, very weird behavior. So you don't want to do that. But let's do this. Let's do a stdc out of my int at position i. So this would be how you would print out each value of your array in a for loop. And we're printing out my int at position i, and i is going to be incrementing. So we'll see how that works. That will be really nice. Now we're going to initialize our array after that to zeros, and we're going to do a printout after that as well here, and we'll see that it will be all zeros. So hopefully we'll get one, two, three, four, five, and then all zeros. Very simple. So let's run this, and we'll see that will get a nice one, two, three, four, five, and then all zeros, all right? And let me just show you this one in case you were confused. So if I put a zero in here like that, and I run this, we're gonna get zeros all the way through, all right? Both from this array and this array. Well, they're the same array, basically, both from these two for loops. We're printing out the same array twice here, just so you're not confused. And if I do this and I run it, it's probably gonna, oh, it's gonna initialize everything else to zeros. Okay, I stand corrected live on video. So if you do this, it will just initialize everything else to zeros. That's good. That's good functionality, actually. Well, there you go. So you can do that if you want and initialize everything that you do need. And that will be good. But if you want to initialize position one and then position zero and then uh, two, then you have to do it all the way through. All right. So there you go. That is a few ways to initialize your arrays. And it's always good to initialize your arrays. Let me just do this and go down here. So we're going to have arrays of different types, right? This array is of one type. We can make different types of arrays. So let me just include string here. And let's make a string array, std string, like that. My str array. And we'll give it a no size. And this is a little surprise for you guys because it's also a way of initializing your arrays you can give it a size depending on how many objects you initialize it with. So this says, okay, wait up, hold up. Let me just initialize some stuff. And depending on how much I have, put that to the size. So I'm going to put in a few names here, David. Shout out to all the Davids. Shout out to all the Eric's. And then maybe a girl's name, Amanda, like that. And maybe my wife's name here. 
there we go so now we have one two three four and five objects but your string array doesn't have a max value in that sense that is determined by this how many objects you have so let me just go ahead and put it in here and usually when you do this it's hard to know how many objects you have so you probably want a secondary variable keeping track of that all right but there you go there, that's it now we're going to do a for loop now i know there's one two three four five objects so i'm just going to do five here and i'm going to print out all of these my string array just in the same way i did before and we will see that we have a bunch of names popping up here so here's david eric amanda Judy. okay so that's good but what if you try to mix and match this you can't because this type determines what type of objects can be held in this array so always remember that keep track of that now we're going to do a array of user defined objects and that's a little different because most of the, most of you who are going to code are going to create your own objects and usually you're probably going to make arrays of them uh, so let's just do that let's make a class person all right very simple class person with a public here public variable std string name the person's going to have a name just like that and we're also going to create a person constructor with a std string name here and that's going to be this name equals a name simple as that the most simple class that you can create ever so now once you have that of course you will have more complicated classes than this but this is for example sake so let's make an array out of these now how do we do that well remember the syntax we need the type person and then we're going to have a name my person array whatever you want to call it r i'll call it r and i want three people in this and i'm going to initialize them from start so first of all, I'm going to initialize them from start, and that's going to be a person with the name search, person with the name David, and a person with the name uh, like that. So you go. Now we have a person array with three persons, and this might be similar to the earlier one with strings. But you can imagine you'll have more variables in here like int age and so on and so on. Understand? So we can do that for the sake of this. So let's say int age here as well. Just for the sake of example. Uh, this age equals age. And let's put in an age. So I'm 30 years old. Let's say David is 26. And my wife is... I don't know what my wife's age is. Don't tell her I don't know this. Okay? Let's say 27. I'm pretty much guessing it's 28 actually. You know what? Shh. Let's chill. It's 28. It's 28. Hopefully she didn't hear me. Okay. Now for loop. We know that there's three people here. Three is the size of this. So let's go through three. And let us print out this. So std cout. Um, let's do this. My person array dot name. And then we're going to do a little colon maybe. And do a my person array dot h sorry i'm using this i'm so used to that you don't have to use that there you go don't mind that you'll get to it later so there you go uh boom 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 good and obviously you need the i here as well i like that so this means that we're printing out each person each person's name and h because they contain two things each class contains two things and we'll do a little semicolon there now let's try this out. So hopefully we'll get search 30, David 26, Juti 28. And that is an array of user-defined objects. A very simple one. Very, very simple one. Good. So now you guys know how that works. Pretty much this is what you need to know about arrays to get started. A few tips I'd say for arrays is to use for each loops. All right. So And also to keep track of the size. So like I said in the beginning, sometimes you might not know the size of this, all right? So what I usually do, what a lot of programmers do, is they make a const int size here that keeps track of it. So you're going to get a few good and advanced tips here. If you don't really understand them, just don't freak out. I'm sure you'll get them. But let's say 5. And now I'm going to do a int, uh, int array 
like that in the rate two, I think I already have one. And I'm gonna create that using size, not the number five. So you can always use size to get back to this. If you have a lot of arrays in your program, you might wanna give it a unique name like int array two size, int array two size like that. Boom, and then you know you have an int array of five values and you can initialize that as you wish. You could put all zeros in here if you want, just like that and you'll be initialized and good and ready to go. The one thing, the one requirement is that this is a constant integer. It is required because you don't wanna be able to change size later, size has to be the same. So this array creation here needs to know that whatever you put in here is a constant value. When I put five or six in here, 56 in here, whatever, this is a constant value, this will never change. So the same is applies to this value here, it needs to be constant. That's great. And let's talk about using for each loop. So say that I have an int array that has, if you're using vectors, usually you're gonna use vectors. So let me do an include vector and you, knew, you need iterators for this. And this is advanced, this is way advanced. You don't have to follow through this, but remember this later on while your coding journey continues, all right? So vector, let's create a vector. Vectors are arrays that are very, very dynamic. All right, they're dynamic arrays, which we'll talk about in the next next uh, video but in case until then you're already working with vectors you should know you should use for each loops with these because they're a lot faster they use iterators instead of this simple int i and all this stuff okay so the way you would do that is you would create a vector of course vector of integers my int vec and it's just the same as an array it's just that it doesn't have any fixed size so whenever i can push a bunch of numbers in this as many as i want and it grows with demand so this is good for you guys to know if you wanna test and play around with this. So that, the way you add things is you push back any number, I'll push back three, and then I'll push back maybe 56 and two, whatever you want. But the same requirement is in this vector that you can only have it for one type. So make sure this is the same type. So there you go. I pushed in three numbers here, for example. And the way you would iterate through this is of course using the same type of thing. You would say my int vec dot size this keeps track of its own size so like that this would be three then in this case and then we would print out std c out my int vec at position i just regularly just like that let's run this and you'll see you'll get those numbers 356 and 2 okay but say that you want a very fast way to do this in games where you have lots of objects and stuff, you don't want to use a regular for loop. Then you want to use a for each loop. So for, what you do then is you do for auto, okay, auto i my int vec, like that. This will go through each object in my int vec and put it into i. So what you can do even here is to make auto reference to make it even more optimized so you don't have to copy it. In this way, we run this, you'll get all the values from my int vec. And like I said, this is advanced, so don't, don't freak out, don't worry, we'll go through this in the next video. But for now, just try to digest this and see, play around with vectors, they're really fun. And I wanna give you one last advanced, very, very advanced tip. And we'll go through this again in the next video, but let me give you a very advanced tip. I know a lot of you have an, a question. What if you have, for example, my int five, and you, you don't wanna keep track of the size in an external, external uh, variable, okay? For example, in this case, let's take this case. My string array, you put in a bunch of things, but you don't know how many things you have in there, right? You don't know what's going on, right? So what I wanna do is I wanna make a const int size, my string array size, and I wanna see how this works, okay? This is a very cool way. Size of, okay, my string array, do that, that's the big number, divided by size of the type that is inside this array. And that would be std string. And what this is gonna do is gonna take the total byte size, size of the bytes in bytes of this entire array divided by the size of each of the strings. And when you put in a string here, it reserves the maximum amount for a string. 
It doesn't just reserve for this much. It reserves for the maximum amount. So that's why you can do this. You can put a generic string type here, divide it by my string array, and you'll get the my string array size. So let's try that. My string array size like that. Let's print that out as well. See out size equals like that and we'll do my string array size and a new line and you'll see that this works this will be a beautiful thing so size five okay size five that's what you get from this this is an easy way and it works most of the time okay in some few cases which i can't talk about right now it doesn't work but mostly you can try this out and it'll work. It's more with pointers and dynamic memory sometimes that this might not work. So especially if you have a pointer defining the array, then it takes the size of the pointer instead of the array itself. So remember that. But for these generic static arrays, this is called a static array, by the way, this works fine. Good guys and girls, let's move on to the last parts of this video, which is some more things on arrays, which we're going to talk on in the coming videos, uh, more advanced topics. So dynamic memory is usually used with arrays okay arrays are created they're not really don't have a fixed size you can add more things to them as time goes on just like vectors okay vectors are using dynamic memory so remember that and just get ready for that you don't have to use arrays with fixed sizes that doesn't really make sense in a practical practical case you rarely know how much things you need in an array when you create it and you don't want to put a max size to it from the beginning most of the time and arrays have a very big relation to pointers. Either you create an array using a pointer or you store pointers in arrays because mostly, like I told you before, when you create a array like this person in here, you're telling it it needs three persons in here. It's going to create placeholders reserving that space for three persons. But when you use pointers, you don't have to put in an entire person in there. You can just create a pointer. And we'll talk about that more later as well. But just remember, usually pointers are used neatly right there. And also you can you can delete things from the middle when you have pointers. You can't do that here. You can nullify something, but you can't delete it. So that's a very good plus for pointers. And that's what I was talking about right now, arrays of pointers. Uh, ways of iterating through arrays, just like I told you, you have the for auto, for loop and everything. But there are a few more ways you can use to iterate through them using while loops, using uh, other iterators come in combination with this. So that's a good way, to, good thing to go through and remember. And then the games and their uses of arrays as well. Now that is a big point actually. I can't really talk a lot about that because there's too much to talk about, but arrays are used in games a lot. So of course you have your items, inventories, maybe enemies, bullets, everything that there's multiple of in your game, usually it's stored in an array like this and a dynamic array which is very nicely optimized and in that way you can you can store a bunch of things and access them at different points that's what's good about that okay so we got, went through a bunch of more advanced things here that i wanted to but i thought i'd give you a little taste of what is to come and we'll go through some dynamic memory later on check out the pointer video as well i promise you that will help you out when we come to the next video that is going to be linked in the comment section and check it out if you want drop a like subscribe thank you so much for watching take care all of you guys and girls good luck with your programming if you have questions let me know also consider supporting supporting my patron page which is in the description otherwise just keep watching i really appreciate it drop a comment and a like and all that and i'll be real happy all right take care see you in the next one Bye bye